Hello, my fellow humans. Today we are doing some music review. You will need your pink folder and a pencil. Inside your pink folder, you should have some listening sheets and you should have this packet that says some basic music review. So let's take out that packet. We may pause the video here and wait until everyone is ready. The first thing is your name. So please write your name. If you're feeling extra nice, you might write the room number where your homeroom teacher is, like the room that you start out the day in. Uh, let's just pretend that mine is 101. And you could write your student number. That's the number where your backpack is hanging and your other things. So your student number could be anywhere from one to probably 27. So I'll just pretend mine is one. So these three things would be nice. At minimum, you need to have your name here. I'm going to write with a pen so that you can see, but you are still writing with a pencil. These lines here, these five lines are called, I'm gonna make a little arrow that goes up here. And I'm gonna write staff, S-T-A-F-F. -F. And I might make a note for myself that they are the five lines. So if you wanted this kind of paper, you would search for staff paper staff. Now this is a review. So let's do a treble clef. You're going to draw a straight line down with a tiny hook at the end. And then make it into a small P, capital letter P. And then this part comes around and circles this line. Now this second line here that it circles is G. And that's why the treble clef is called the G clef. So under here, I'm going to write treble clef, T-R-E-B-L-E-C-L-E-F, treble clef. And that's the G clef. It's fancy, but all it does is it shows us that G is right here on this line. Let's practice drawing another treble clef straight down with a hook at the end. Small capital P to the right, and then it curves around in a circle like a snail around the G. I like this one a little better than my first one. Straight down with a hook. Capital P that's extra skinny. And then it curves around like a snail around the G line. Treble clef. Now on the next line, you should still have a lot of space here and we're gonna come back to this, so please don't fill this up, all right? But down on the next line, we're gonna start not at the top one, but the second from the top. This line here, the second line, is F. This is F in the bass clef, okay? I don't know if we have done anything with the bass clef, but we're gonna start with a tiny dot and then draw an ear like this, and then two dots in the spaces around this line. 
This is the F clef or the bass clef. B A S S, bass, which means low clef. The low clef, it's for low instruments and singers that sing very low. So we have the treble clef, that's for higher instruments like violin or when we are singing, we sing in the treble clef right now. And the bass clef is for lower instruments like a bass guitar or even a cello. So let's practice drawing a couple of bass clefs. Start on the second line with a tiny dot Make an ear that goes around like that. And then a dot above and below that F line, because that's what we're showing is where F is. F is right there. And we'll do another one on this little line around with two dots. All right, now I said we would go back to the top line and we are going to do that now, okay? So on the top line, let's draw our space notes. That's the notes that don't have a line going through them. We're going to start at the bottom going up. When we spell face, it's from the bottom up. So this first note is F, the second space is A, the third space is C, and the fourth space at the top is E. And this spells the word face, like you have a beautiful face, but it should be covered with a mask, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's, my jokes are bad. And then I'm going to draw a double bar line. So here, this, Boop, boop, is a bar line, bar line, and it divides one part of the music from another. It can be a single bar or a double bar, so this is a double bar, full stop. Now I'm going to do my line notes. If you have run out of space, feel free to do that on the third line, okay? Hopefully you still have space, but we will see. E, so this has a line going through it. Line going through it. And we're gonna draw a note on each line going up to the top one. Now, this one doesn't spell a word. We have a saying, every good bird does fly, okay? Um, every good bird does fly. Now, if you remember this already, you don't have to write all the words underneath it. Every good bird does fly. E, G, B, D, F. And you notice we always start low on the staff going up, right? Same with face. We start at the bottom one and we spell moving up. And I'm gonna put another bar line here just to make it look nice. So the bass clef also has some space and line notes, and we are not going to put those in yet. But I want you to know that they are different than the upper ones. Um, they put space between the treble clef and the bass clef, right? These things can be joined together to make one grand, oh, you can't see it grand staff. This 
is called the Grand Staff. Oh, my poor pen. And the Grand Staff is just the treble and bass clef staves put together. In the middle, we have the note C, right? That's the one with the line through it. But that's maybe not important right now, but I can draw one here. This is the note C, right? Or it could be drawn down lower above here and it would still be C, but the idea is that it's just in the middle of the two stabs. We have a couple of other symbols that I would like for us to know. We have this one that looks like what you guys call a hashtag. Hashtag. And this is a sharp. And it means that the note is going up higher, right? So this is on the F line of the bass clef. And if this was in front of a note, this is an F sharp, right? That means it's higher. It's instead of an F, it's an F sharp. Now, if I have a flat before a note, let's make an F flat, sure. Flat, then that means that the note is a half step lower. So if you have a piano, right? Usually these might be on the black keys of the piano. So flat is lower, sharp is higher. And I think that the arrows are a nice way of defining that. Now the rest of this, if you have some extra space, you can practice writing your treble clefs and your bass clefs and maybe some notes, right? So this line I've given you as extra just for practice writing out some music.